Welcome back to the iOS XR series. Today we're going to just a recap through our larger topologies. We have ISP East and ISP West at the bottom. At the top we have ISP North. And uh, since we started our series, we've been working through the ISP North. First we built our IGPs and uh, now today we're going to take a look at MPLS IP to build that in ISP North to get it ready for the uh, further MPLS applications later in the tasks. Um, just to recap on IGPs, uh, in, in overview we are going to run OSPF in ISP East, uh, we are going to run ISIS and ISP North and similarly IS2IS in ISP West. Uh, so that's going to be our overall IGP layout once we getting ready for BGP and layer 2, layer 3 VPN uh, services. We're going to leverage the uh, CEs later on. We have the customers uh, that we're going to demonstrate uh, layer 2 and layer 3 VPNs. Uh, using these customer connected, we're going to then use inter provider VPN uh, between ISP North and, and West and probably also with East as well. So as we go through the series we're going to cover segment routing, ISIS and um, all the layer 3 VPNs, layer 2 VPN and all the ISPs technologies using iOS XR. So today's focus is uh, building MPLS LDP in the ISP North. So First of all, we're going to focus today people who come from the background of iOS, they know how to configure LDP in the iOS and in iOS XR it's a, it's a little bit different, I would say a lot of differences in terms of configuring um, MPLS LDP and today we're going to go ahead and use PE1, PE2, PE3 and PE4 and we have RR1 and 2 in the middle and we're going to create a full mesh of MPLS LDP between all the connected interfaces. So let's go ahead and uh, next we're going to jump on to the routers and start configuring uh, MPLS LDP in iOS XR. Let's start with PE1. So what we're going to do today for the purpose of verifications to make it easy to understand which labels have assigned by each LSR to the IPv4 prefixes. We're going to assign label range to each of the LSR participating in the LDP domain. So for PE1 we're going to assign a label range of 16,000 to 17,000. So let's go ahead and start the config on PE1. So first of all we're going to assign the label range to the LSR in this case is PE1. So we're going to use the command MPLS label range and we're going to set the label range as discussed before between 16,000 to 17,000 for PE1. The MPLS LDP in iOS XR is configured under the routing process of MPLS LDP. We're going to go under the routing process and assign the routing ID. Then we're going to go and enable the interfaces that are participating in the LDP, in this case KIC 0000 and 0001. We're going to commit the config. Let's take a look at the running config of MPLS LDP. We see that the LDP is enabled under the routing process of MPLS LDP. First of all, we've set up the routing ID and using the loopback IP address of the LSR, in this case is PE1 and that is 10.0.0.1. We've enabled both GIG 0.0.0.0 and 0.0.0.1 and the label range is also assigned in the global config of the PE1. Next we're going to look at the PE2. So to PE2 we're going to assign the label range of 17,000 to 18,000. To start the config we're going to use the same steps again so let's uh, go on to PE2 and first of all assign the label range and that is going to be MPLS label range 17,000 to 18,000 so then we're going to go under the routing process and enable MPLS LDP. Router ID followed by the both interfaces on PE2 
that are enabled for MPLS LDP. And just to verify, I, as I said, always use steps. So step one is to set the label range. Step two is to enable the routing process and enable the interfaces and set the router ID and this final step to just quickly take a look at the running config to ensure that we have assigned the correct labels and configs. We're going to go through verifications later in the task once we have configured all the routers and config is complete. So next one is PE3. So we're going to assign label range of 18,000 to 19,000 for the PE3. So let's go into the PE3 and first of all we're going to go into the config mode, set the label range 18,000 to 19,000. We're going to set the router ID. And enable both interfaces to participate in MPLS LDP. As I make the commit, I notice a mistake. We have enabled gig 000 twice and <laughs> with, the, with the magic of editing, I managed to fix it. So let's take a look at uh, show run of the P3 and we see that we have a MPLS LDP enabled and we have both interface is correct. Next up is PE4. So let's decide the label range first. We have 19,000 to 20,000 allocated label range for PE4. Next we're going to start the config. We're going to go under the config mode and set the label range for MPLS labels for the PE4. So they are going to be between 19 to 20,000. Next we're going to enable MPLS LDP and set the router ID that's 10.0.0.4, the loopback IP address of PE4. We're going to then enable LDP for the interfaces gig 0000 and 0001. Commit the config. Let's a quick take a look at the running config to ensure that we have set up correctly fantastic so that looks good so we have the um, config correct next is rr1 so we're going to set the label range first that is between 20,000 to 21,000 And we're going to enable MPLS LDP. Set the router ID to 10.0.0.5. That's the loopback IP address of RR1. And then we're going to enable the three interfaces. Oops. <laughs> On third attempt, and it's 0.0.0.1 and 2. So commit the config. And let's now take a look at the running config to see if it's OK. We see that we've got the MPLS LDP router ID is set and all three interfaces are part of MPLS LDP. So with that done, we're next going to move to RR2. Label range is going to be the next available range that is between 21,000 to 22,000. As we know that we fixing the labels on these LSRs when it comes to verification we can then verify is the label allocated by a particular LSR in the output that we're going to verify. So in order to give us a clear indication on verification we're doing this in a production network I would leave the label range to standard. 
So we're going to set the MPLS label range again here for the LSR that is RR2 and we're going to set the next available range, enable the MPLS LDP, set the router ID of 10006, that's the loopback IP for the RR2. We're going to go and enable MPLS LDP for the three connected interfaces and commit the config. Let's start a verification of LDP from PE1. First of all, we're going to use show MPLS LDP interface brief. This should be the command we should always run first to ensure that to check which interfaces are enabled for the LDP. Here we check that the gig interface 0000 is in VRF default. The config is enabled and there's no IGP auto config is used and there's no traffic engineering used for this interface. Similarly for the next interface we have config enabled and it is by config and there's no auto config and for the final interface there is no LDP enabled for the PE1. The next verification command we should use is show MPLS LDP discovery. So we this gives us more information about the LDP's discovery information of all the interfaces where LDP was enabled. We here say that local LDP identifier is the loopback IP address of PE1 and that is a source of discovery and it is discovering via the gig interface 0000 for both transmit and receive. It's in VRF default. And what we've discovered out of the interface is a, an LSR that is with a loopback IP address of 10.0.0.5 and transport address of 10.0.0.5. That is the loopback IP address of RR1. We have the established times, etc. Similarly, over the gig interface 001, we have discovered PE2. The IP address of the transport address of the PE2 is the loopback IP address which is 10.0.0.2 and we see that out of the gig interface on the right side 0.0.0 we've discovered RR1 and out of the interface gig 0.0.1 down below we've discovered PE2. So show MPLS LDP discovery is a very useful command to check any issues of LDP when troubleshooting. So this should be the command that should we should use second in the step after checking the interfaces that are enabled for LDP to ensure that there are no issues with discovery and transport address reachability and etc. So here we on PE2, PE1, it's saying that it has discovered PE2 out of the interface gig 0001 and that is downwards interface. And transport address here in this case is the loopback IP address of PE2, that is 10.0.0.2 and it's been established for that time. Next we're going to use a show MPLS LDP neighbors and this is the command we should use at third in steps to verify if the adjacencies are up. And show MPLS LDP neighbor brief gives us information that we have we are pairing with 10.0.0.2. No graceful restart is enabled and no non-stop routing is enabled either. The uptime is there and we know that we've discovered the neighbor using IPv4 discovery and it is IPv4 address and the number of labels we've received from the peer. The second neighbor we have on PE1 is 10.0.0.5 that's the LSR as RR1. Similarly there's no GR and NSR enabled. Discovery is IPv4 and the number of labels received. 
Next, take a look at show MPLS forwarding table. If you stay with me for a bit, I will try and explain the local label column here explains that the label the local LSR is going to assign to prefixes into his MPLS table. So we know that PE1 has got a label range of 16,000 to 17,000. So it's going to assign the prefix labels from that range to prefixes. We know that the 20,000 range is for the RR2 and we see that the prefix uh, loopback IP address of RR2 has been assigned the outgoing label when it sends the label out towards the RR2 from a label range that is assigned on RR2. So next line we see that there's a pop label for the uh, RR1 that is the next stop to PE1 and the pop operation comes into place and PHP process is going to remove the label and send the naked IP packet over to the directly connected LSR that is RR1. Let's zoom out and take a look at a little bit more details. We know that the 16,000 label has been assigned for the loopback IP address of RR2 that is dot six and local label and the outgoing label is the label range from the RR2 and it's going to push that label onto the packet and send it out of the interface connected directly towards and send it out there. We know that 16001 label is a sign for the next LSR which is the RR1 which is connected out to the gig 0001. So PHP process is going to remove the label therefore we see that the outgoing label is pop and it's going to send the naked IP packet over to the RR1. Next we're going to verify the reachability and test the label operations in action. So we're going to go on to the PE1 and we're going to trace the route to 10.0.0.4 that is the loopback IP address of PE4. So let's jump on to PE1 and trace to 10.0.0.4 and we here we see that the packet has gone through MBLS core and label operation is in effect. So first of all, the packet leaves out of the interface gig 00 and goes to 10.1.1.2. That is the next stop IP address of RR1. The label assigned is label range from the RR1. Next, it's going to go out of the interface downwards, which is 10.1.6.2. 2 is the next stop IP address of RR2. And we see the label exposed here is the label range from the RR2. Once the packet arrives on RR2, the PHP process then removes the outer label as it knows that the LSR is directly connected and it's going to send the IP packet directly over to PE4 and over the interface gig 0001. I hope this has been informative and thank you for watching and I will look forward to see you in the next video of this series of iOS XR where we're going to go and build our BGP core next.